you know, the true leaders in this effort, um, Delegate Mazur for her work that she's done since she's been down in Annapolis. Give her a round of applause. <laughs> I mean, I got to know uh, Heather when uh, we were doing the Kerry campaign, and she was working on Capitol Hill, and she decided to run for the House of Delegates, and I tried to convince her to go on another committee, and she said, no, I want to focus on health. And since getting there, she's become one of the leaders in this effort. And I know, and I never thought that uh, it would come into play with me as county executive, but here we stand in Prince George's County, where the number one, two, and three issues of the county are education, public safety, and health. The well-being of Prince George's County and access to health. The fact that we are the leaders in so many wrong indicators around health means that we as a county must focus on it. So her leadership in Annapolis has helped us to do that. So I want to thank her for uh, her leadership and partnership. Good friend of mine who we go way back to uh, my first days uh, in the House of Delegates and who we partnered on so many great initiatives, uh, including That's education, <laughs> including education and health. Just think at the time that Jim Hubbard was actually pushing the county toward expansion of health access and moving the needle, uh, many in our delegation were not. And so we're, I'm fortunate to have a great partner still, you know, up in Annapolis and, uh, and working with us here in the county, Jim Hubbard. Can we give him a round of applause? You know, just to show you how blessed I am, and maybe it's because, of, you know, uh, coming into office I need these blessings. Um, we've got a chair of the, of the delegation who understands not only this issue but many more, um, who works at it on her, I don't know if you could say a day job, because in, in Annapolis, <laughs> in Annapolis it is the day job, it's a full-time job, but uh, chair of our house delegation, Melanie Griffith, is doing a great job. <laughs> and since, since I won the primary, has been a thorn in my side about health. <laughs> And I want you to know I, I heard you, I heard you loud and clear, which is why I went and grabbed somebody to say, come up here and, and help us move, help us move, uh, move uh, in the right direction in terms of access and uh, providing uh, care. And that's why I was pleased to ask Pam Creekmer to come in and step in as our acting health officer. She's done a great job so far. Can we give her a round of applause? <laughs> I say all of these things because um, the last person I'll mention, and this will tell you how serious this administration is about this, is um, I asked Betty Hager Francis to be the Deputy CAO for Health and Human Services. And the reason I did was I wanted to send a clear signal to everybody that we were going to get a proven manager um, at the top and every day in the meetings at the executive level. That's why we put her over there. So that means when we have our, um, and the other thing I should say is uh, it tells you how serious we are and how pleased we are to be in this building. And, and when I first came over here, I thought he was actually going to greet us at his office. And that is the acting CAO, and hopefully in a couple of months, the CAO, uh, Bradford Seaman, whose office used to be right up here before we stole him, um, spent the first 10 months, first seven months of this administration as the DCAO for Health and Human Services. And if anybody's worked around health, will know he spent the majority of his time in health. In fact, that is where his passion is. I keep reminding him, and we have our complete, you know, entire government to run. But he always circles back, doesn't he, Teresa? Circles back to health. Um, because he understands like we understand. That is, we can't do anything about our education system until we deal with health access. That when, you know, infant mortality, low birth weight babies. Uh, those indicators that we have in this county need to change. That means our work just can't be about Prince George's County or Maryland. It's got to be about the surrounding area in the Washington area. So we can't move the needle unless we help our, our neighbors in Washington, D.C. move it. And so that means this administration needs to have people who understand this is not a second tier issue. This is first and foremost in our mind. And that is what we talk about. So I want to thank you for the work that you're doing, and we're, and we're pleased to partner with you. Thank you very much.